So last lecture we we discussed uh, characteristics of systems of, uh, of conservation laws. It turns out if we express the system of conservation laws in its primitive forms, we write partial u partial x plus the derivative of the flux to the solution vector u. So now everything uh, is a vector. So this is partial f partial u is the Jacobian matrix of the flux because the flux is a multivariate, multidimensional function. If we have a system of two conservation laws, there are two u's, there are two f's. So dfdu is going to be a two by two matrix, <coughs> right? So we have this matrix dot with the gradient of u. Um, so, so this is going to be equal to zero. And if we perform eigenvalue analysis of that matrix, we get the characteristic speeds. As opposed to scalar conservation laws, where in which there is a single characteristics, in a system of in a system of conservation laws, there are multiple characteristics, usually corresponding to the dimension of that matrix. If we draw t in the y-axis and x in the x-axis, in a scalar conservation law, the characteristics determines the slope of the uh, of the line on which the solutions are constant. But for system of conservation laws, for example, in shallow water equation, we derived two characteristic lines. And on each characteristic line, a particular linear combination of the solution is preserved. And that particular linear combination actually does not stay constant. It doesn't stay, the linear combination coefficients of the solution doesn't stay constant. It only stays constant for linear equations. Whenever we have a nonlinear equation, dfdu changes as the solution u changes. Therefore, the characteristic speeds changes and the eigenvectors of the matrix changes as the solution evolves. So along that line, even along that single characteristic line, we no longer have a constant linear combination. The linear combination itself actually changes. And also, the line, the characteristic lines, at every point, we can compute its speed. But the speed is no longer going to be staying constant, because the solution no longer stays constant. Right, only particular linear combination of the solution stays constant for a small range. And then the linear combination itself changes, and uh, everything, the solution is going to change. So these characteristics, they first of all, they are going to overlap each other because there are two characteristics. OK, and also uh, they may curve even in smooth regions of the space. and. Uh, uh, because the linear combination, they change its value, if you make a small perturbation here, the small perturbation is going to propagate not only according to the characteristic speeds, but also they are going to influence every solution that is bounded by these two characteristic lines. The region of influence of any small perturbation is going to be like a cone bounded by the fastest left-going and fastest right-going characteristics. Remember in shallow water equation, the characteristics we have is the local speed u, so shallow water equation. The characteristics is equal to the local speed of the flow plus and minus 
square root of gh. What I was drawing corresponds to the situation where the absolute value of u is smaller than square root of gh. And the other situation is when the absolute value of u exceeds square root of gh. Then both characteristics are going in one direction. If we make a small perturbation here, the region of influence of the perturbation is going to be a cone like that. Which means something interesting, that is, if you look at a spatial point where x is smaller than the location of the perturbation, that spatial point has absolutely no influence by the small perturbation, no matter how long you go ahead in time. So this is a supersonic situation where if you fly a supersonic airplane, the, re the, uh, the region of space ahead of you is never going to feel your influence. The only influence you have is on, on the space uh, behind you. That's why you create shock waves. That, uh, the, the shock wave is because before the shock wave hits you, the air never feels the presence of the airplane. And after uh, and only after uh, the shockwave sweeps through that point, uh, the air feels the presence. So this is, uh, uh, this is the supersonic situation over here. All right. So now, uh, given these characteristics, we now start to study what is the appropriate upwind, what is the appropriate upwinding strategy for a system of conservation laws? In scalar conservation laws, we know very well what is the upwind direction because there is only one characteristic. And depending on if the, if the characteristic speed is positive or negative, if it's positive, we look towards the left. If it's negative, we look towards the right. Now, we have multiple characteristics. And in the supersonic regions, we still know what to do, right? We still know what to do because there are other characteristics, despite having multiple of them, they all go towards the same direction. In this case, if u is greater than gh, we should all upwind towards the left. If minus u is greater than square root of gh, we should all upwind towards the right. But in the blue case, it is not obvious how to upwind. It looks like, depending on which characteristic are you talking about, my upwind direction can either be left or right. How to deal with this situation? One very elegant way to deal with the situation where there are multiple characteristics going in different directions is something is using something we studied before, that is the equivalence of an upwinding scheme to numerical dissipation, right? So when we studied a linear advection equation, and uh, discretizing the spatial operator using upwind, it's going to give us an equation that is dui dt plus, in this case, upwind is towards the left. So ui minus ui minus 1 over delta x is equal to 0. The upwind discretization, although it is a first order consistent discretization of the differential equation, but it is actually a more accurate, I think, a third order discretization of a different equation. So that's. So this is a first order discretization of the original equation, but it is a higher order discretization of the equation with some numerical dissipation. This is equal to delta x times partial square u partial x square. And this situation is the same for uh, upwinding in a different direction. So if we are looking at an equation that is partial u partial t plus any 
let me write c times partial u partial x equal to zero no matter what the sign of c is the upwinding is going to either give you this scheme or if c is less than zero it's going to give me dui dt plus ui plus one minus ui over delta x is equal to zero but no matter if we have oh, there is a c here no matter if c is greater than zero which we get the green case or c is less than zero we get the blue case the upwind discretization is going to be a more accurate discretization of the following equation du dt plus c times du dx equal to delta x times the absolute value of c times the second derivative of x uh, of u upwinding no matter left or right is going to introduce a numerical dissipation proportional to the grid size delta x and to the absolute value of the characteristic characteristic speed so that gives us motivation that if we have multiple characteristics a good way to achieve the same effect of upwinding is by introducing a numerical dissipation that is proportional to delta x and also that is big enough for the fastest char characteristics in the system of equations.